Good day to you. This is uh, Mr. Mlenga, your teacher of geography. So in our previous meeting, we were discussing Zambia's relief levels. And today I want us to discuss the major drainage features of Zambia. Now, before we go further in discussing Zambia's major drainage features, I want us to look at some of the objectives I want us to achieve by the end of the lesson. So our first objective will be to define drainage. Define drainage. Then the second objective will be to identify Zambia's major drainage features. Then our third objective will be to state the importance of Zambia's drainage features. So by the end of the lesson, I expect you all to be able to achieve these objectives and be able to answer them. Now, I'll take you straight into the definition of drainage. Now, drainage refers to the system of rivers, lakes, and swamps. Now, I want you to understand something on, on drainage. So when we say Zambia's drainage or the drainage of Zambia, it refers to how rainwater is drained by rivers that flow into lakes and swamps and eventually into the oceans. So what this simply means is that, for example, when it rains, the water that finds itself on the land usually is drained by water bodies such as rivers and lakes. So the water on the land finds its way to the rivers and lakes. That's why we call these rivers and lakes as drainage features because they drain the water from the land. That's the basic concept. So the freshwater lakes, rivers, and swamps, they are the ones that make up drainage features. So as you're able to see on this map, we have different drainage features. So this, which you're able to see here, this blue line, indicated here, as you're able to see, this is the Zambezi drainage feature or the Zambezi river. Then we have the Kafue river, which is the Kafue drainage feature. Then we have the Luangwa drainage feature. We have the Chambeshi, Luapula drainage features. Then we have Lake Mweruantipa, Lake Tanganika, Lake Mweru, Lake Kariba, and so on. We have several of them. These are not the only ones. So these are just some, some examples. Now, what are the functions or importance of these Zambia's drainage features, such as rivers, lakes, and swamps? Now, one of the importance of these drainage features is transportation. So these drainage features are used as a mode of transport by the local people. So most of the lakes are used by locals as a means of transportation of people and domestic goods for their own use as well as for exports to other countries. Many Zambian families who live near rivers and lakes use small boats as a form of transport as part of their daily lives, such as for going to school or to work. So if you are to go to Chilubi Island, you will discover that most of the people there use small boats for transportation to go to nearby places. Lake Tanganyika, for example, is used to, tr to transport sugar and cement to the Great Lakes region of Rwanda and Burundi as well as Tanzania. 
Now, the other very important, you know, value of these drainage features is farming. Now, these drainage features are used in farming because most of the farmers during the period when we do not have rainfall use what we call irrigation or they water the plants or crops using water from these drainage features. Now, some rivers and lakes provide water for irrigating a wide variety of crops farmed in Zambia, as well as water for cattle and poultry to drink. Fishing is another very important aspect about these drainage features. Now, fishing is an important industry in Zambia, both in the form of catching fish occurring naturally in rivers, in lakes, as well as fish farming. As you're able to see in this picture, these are fishermen catching fish on Lake Danganika. Then we have a family here irrigating their vegetables. So this is clearly indicating the importance of these drainage features. So this family is able to tap water from a stream and be able to water the, uh, the, the, the plants. Very important. Now, power generation, another important. Now, hydroelectric power stations make an important contribution to Zambia's power supply by using the power of falling water to generate electricity. Now, hydroelectric power is one of the major sources of energy in Zambia. Now, we're, we're gonna discuss sources of, sources of energy at a later stage. Now, major hydroelectric power stations are found on Lake Sariba and at the Kafue Gorge on the Kafue River. The Kariba North Bank is our major hydroelectric power station. Then we have the Kafue, the Kafue Gorge Hydro Power Station, Victoria Falls Power Station, Lunsemfa Hydro Power Station, and the Itejiteji Hydro Power Station. So these are our major hydro power stations that we have in Zambia. Now, all these hydro power stations, you find them on these drainage features, on Lake Kariba and the Kafue Gorge. As you can be all aware, the Victoria Falls is a falls that, that forms on the Zambezi River. So these drainage features are very important. This is the this is the the Kariba North Bank, where we have energy being generated. So we'll discuss energy energy generation in detail at a later stage. Now, the other importance of these, um, you know, of these drainage features is for domestic use. So water that you, you know you find in these drainage features is used domestically. So this includes washing, cooking, drinking, bathing, and other domestic use. So this is you know one of the major you know importance of these drainage. Features. Now, I'm going to take you straight now into tourism. Now, tourism is one of, you know, the values that comes with these drainage features. Now, so many tourists from different parts of the world visit Zambia, for example, to access 
the beauty or the beautiful scenery that these, you know, drainage features provide. Now, tourists from all over the world enjoy observing the rich wildlife along Zambia's waterways. Now, these waterways have different, you know, types of animals or wildlife that you find around them. Now, however, one of the important things that you must know about these drainage features also is that when these tourists come, either local or international, they do not always realize the dangers that water animals such as hippos and crocodiles present to both visitors and local people who make use of, you know, these rivers and lakes. One could be very surprised to say hippos kill more people in the world than lions. Did you know that? Yes. Why? Because there are more people who access these water bodies where these water animals are found, which are also dangerous. Not so many people go in national parks where, you, where you're able to find lions. So that's the, the reason behind that. So hippos are responsible for more deaths in Africa each year than any type of wild animal. These hippos, very, very dangerous. But beautiful to look at. As you're able to see, these are tourists on the, the Kafue River within the Kafue National Park. Tourism. Now, I want to run you through quickly some of the examples of Zambia's major rivers. So we have the Zambezi River, we have the Kafue River, Luangwa River, Ambeshi, Luapula River. So these are our spectacular major rivers that we have. Now, as you're able to see on this map, there is the Zambezi River, the Kafue River, the Luangwa River. Now, the Luangwa River, like the Zambezi River, in these major rivers in general, they are what we call tributaries. Now, these tributaries are smaller rivers that move from the major rivers or join the major rivers. These are tributaries. I don't want you to forget that. Tributaries are smaller rivers which come from major rivers or which join major rivers. So for example, the Luangwa River, we have the Lunsenfa River, which, which uh, let me take you back. We have the Lunsenfa River, which is a tributary of the Luangwa River. Now, lakes in Zambia. Now, I want you to understand to say a lake is any body of water that collects in a depression, that collects in a depression or low-lying inland area. Lakes can be formed in different ways, including artificial or man-made, earth movements, and erosion. artificial or man-made lakes. Now, these are lakes which people build or which are made by man. So people build dams across streams and rivers resulting in artificial lakes of varying sizes. Now, this is done to use water resources either for generating electricity or farmlands. Examples of such lakes are Lake Kariba, 
shared by Zambia and Zimbabwe. We also have the Kaburabasa in Mozambique. Both these lakes are created by building of dams on the Zambezi River. Now, we also have earth movements or rift valley lakes. Now, the earth out layer, also called the lake crust or the earth crust, has two main movements. It has forces of compression and tension. These are the two main forces, forces of compression and tension. Now, forces of compression, where the crust is flexible, result in the earth crust bending and warping to form ford mountains. Tension forces occur where two parts of the earth's crust are moving or pulling away from each other, causing deep fractures in the earth's crust. Now, water is then collected in these deep fractures, forming lakes. These lakes are called rift valley lakes. Now, an example of a rift valley lake is Lake Tanganyika. So, if I ask you a question in the exam to say, give an example of a rift valley lake in the world or in Africa, you say Lake Tanganyika. This is a rift valley lake. Now, swamps. Swamps are wetland areas usually found near lakes or rivers. These are land areas that are not totally underwater as in the lakes or rivers themselves, but they remain wet and soggy all year round. They are permanently watery. Now, trees and other plants such as reeds grow very well in these swamps and they provide a home to a variety of bird life and other animals. Examples of swamps found in Zambia include Bangweolu swamps, Lukanga swamps, Usanga swamps, Meruantipa swamps, and the like. Now, you must also be able to take note of the Luena, Luena flats, the Lua flats, Kachigi, uh, Kachigi plains. So this is how swamps look like. If you go to the Busanga swamps, you find the feature that looks like this. Now, let me just show you a map of Zambia indicating some of these, you know, water bodies that we are just from highlighting. So we have what we call the Barose flood plain here. Then we have the Kafue flats here within the Kafue, you know, national park. Then we have what we call the Bangweulu swamps, just around the Bangweulu or, or, or Lake Bangweulu. Then we have um, Lake Kariba here. So these are some of the, the water bodies. And on this other map, we have the Lukanga swamps, which is the largest swamp, the largest swamp in Zambia which is found in in um, in central province, just about 50 kilometers west of Kawe. Then we have Lake Mwiruwantipa swamps here on this map. We also have the Busanga Plains here. On this other map, we have what we call the Busanga Plains and the Bangweolu swamps here, as you're able to see on the map. Now, I want you to take keen interest in also looking at these two plains. So we have what we call the Lua Plain or the Wulozi Flood Plains in the western part of Zambia. Then we also have the Luena Flats. So these are very close to each other, the Luena Flats and the Lua Plains or the Wulozi or Barotse Flood Plains. So you must be able to know all these. So without wasting much of the time, I want to take you straight into exam questions. So this is an extract from the 2017 
paper one's social studies. Now, if you look at this map, we have H, I, G, E, F, and the key is indicating what each of these features mean. Now, question one says, let me take you back. The question says, find the map of Zambia below and answer questions seven to 10. So we are beginning with question seven. So question seven says, what is the name of the river marked E? What is the name of the river marked E? So what is the name of the river marked E? So we have E here. You remember, I made mention of the Luangwa I, I made mention of the Luangwa River. And I explained to you to say the smaller river, uh, rivers which join a bigger river or which branch off a bigger river, we call them tributaries. We call them tributaries. So here on the options, we have Tambeshi, Lukusashi, Lukutu and Lunsenfwa. I made mention to say the tributary for the Luangwa River is Lunsenfwa. So here we have Lunsenfwa River at E, branching off the Luangwa River. Then we have question eight, which says name Town F. Now, Town F is Chama. So here we have Chipata. We have Chipata, then we have Lundazi, then from Lundazi, we have Chama there. So town F is Chama. So the best possible answer on question eight is A. Question nine, what is the name of es escarpment G? If you remember very well in, a, in our previous lesson, where we were discussing the Zambia's relief levels, I made mention to say, here we have what we call the Zambezi escarpment. We have the Zambezi escarpment. So the best possible answer here is the Zambezi escarpment. Let me take you back now to question 10, which says, what physical feature is located at H? What physical feature is located at H? Now at H here, I made mention when we were looking at the map to say at H we have the Luena Flats. Then on the other side, we have the Vlozi or Barotse Flood Plain. So at H we have the Luena Flats. So the best possible answer here is C. Then question 11 says, what is the name of the feature I? Dejiteji, Kafiwe, Kariba, Mulungoshi. Kafiwe Gorge, Itejiteji, Kariba, Mulungoshi. So let me take you back to the map. What is the name of feature I? Feature I. What is the name of feature I? Now, if you look at where feature I is, that is within Kafiwe, just outside Kafiwe National Park. Outside Kafiwe National Park, along the Kafiwe River. Now, there, this is where you find, this is where you find the Kafiwe Gorge. The Kafiwe Gorge. So there you find the Kafiwe, the Kafiwe Gorge. So the best possible the best possible answer, the best possible answer here on question 11, on question 11 for the feature I is the Itejiteji Dam. Now, the Itejiteji Dam is very important, very, very important for generation of energy. So the answer here is A. I would like to thank you so much for your attention. I'll see you in our next lesson. Have a lovely day.